Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be in the place in holy ground. The anointing is thick in this place. Be ready to receive. Be ready to partake of the living bread, the bread of life. The Bible says that Jesus is the door. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the good shepherd. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this precious time. I'm going to welcome my kids up to the front. Okay. And every day, in the morning and in the night, we confess a scripture. And you can partake of your healing right now, right here. You can receive it now. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, separating the bone from the marrow, the spirit and the soul. It is powerful. Last week, as I was attending my church in West Covina, California, I was brought into remembrance of John chapter 5. And it was about the, uh, the handicapped man. He's disabled. And he was at the poor Bathsheba. The poor Bethsaida. And he was waiting because it was told that at a certain time, at a certain season, the angel will come down and stir up the water, trouble the water. And Jesus looks at him and he says he understood he was there for a long time. He was waiting. He was disabled. He was paralyzed, neutralized. And he says, when the angel comes to stir the water, somebody steps in the water before I do. And Jesus asked him, he looked at him and he says, what do you want me to do? Amen. Jesus is asking you this morning, right now, what do you want him Amen. to do? Amen. Receive it. It's available for you. You can partake of it. So then Jesus, right now, he's stirring up the atmosphere of faith in this place. He is stirring up the atmosphere of healings, of miracles. So expect. Okay? We expect something good is going to happen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. God is able to do above and beyond what we ask and what we think. He sent his word and healed me. He takes sickness and disease away from the midst of me, and by his stripes I was healed. Amen. Every day we take our flu shot. Uh, How do we take our flu shot? Uh, Go ahead, show us. The immune system is built up, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and I will not get sick. I believe, I receive healing for my body. Amen. The word of the Lord is a medicine. Amen. It's life and health. Fill your temple with the word of life. It's a living word. It's an inspiration of God Almighty. It won't be long now, God says. Things are going to happen fast. God bless us. God keep us. God cause his face to shine upon us. And God be gracious unto us. God look at us with favor and give us light. Help. Could no sickness, no disease, no kindness. All the days of our lives. Because we're miracle people. We should live a miracle life. Because we're healthy, wealthy, and wise. And the blessing of the Lord makes us rich and adds no sorrow. If we can believe, all things are possible to us that believeth. If we abide in Him and His words abide in us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto us. And if you delight yourselves in the Lord, he shall give you desires of a heart. And if I say to this mountain, you should be removed, be cast into the sea. We have put on heart, we believe what we 
change from the past. We should have whatever we say. And whatsoever yeah. desires when we pray. We believe, we receive, and we shall have. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Amen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is not a man that he should lie. God is a rewarder of those that consistently seek him. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we got to go after God. The word declares, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. All right, let's turn to Romans chapter 12. Be ready to receive. God is doing something right now. Amen. At the end of the service, if you got touched, if you got healed, come forward and give your testimony. Amen. You could be sitting down because where the place you, where you, you're at is holy ground. You don't have Amen. to take off your shoes like Moses. You could receive it right now. Amen. Receive it in your spirit. Faith comes from your spirit. Be ready to fill your spirit. God is talking and he's touching the inner man, the inner being. One of my friends is a pastor in uh, Los Angeles, California. And he shut down the church immediately. Once the government said, we're going to shut it down. He said, okay, let's shut down the church. And I said, Why you, how come you shut it down so quickly? He was straight up honest with me. He said, you know what, Joe? I don't have faith for the coronavirus. Mm. The reason the church got rocked, because most believers never had to live by faith. Most believers never filled their spirit with faith, with the word. So when the chaos came, when the fear came, they trembled and they bowed the knee to Baal. Would Jesus, would he have shut down the church for the coronavirus in his days? Would the disciples shut down the church? They preach in the time of execution. They pe preach in the time of persecution. Paul says, preach the word in season and out of season. So preach it in the midst of the coronavirus, in the midst Amen. or out of the corona. You preach the word. Amen. Some of the Christians were cast into the lion's den. Some, uh, some Christians were crucified. Paul said, I am ready for the time of my departure is at hand. He has said, I fought a good fight. He said, I finished my race. And he says, I'm ready to be offered. He said, I am ready to see Jesus. Hallelujah. He had it in his heart. That was the only way out. But he desired that. To please, it became a sweet aroma in the presence of God. See, God is faithful to keep His Word. God wants us to drop His Word in our spirit. Drop it in your spirit so it becomes you. It's engrafted in part of you. It becomes you. You become one with the Word. It's a part of your lifestyle. So when the situation comes, if there's an evil report, you're not going to bow the knee. That's right. If you get an evil report from the doctor, according to medical science, the doctor says you have cancer and you got six months to live. You say no, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You confess the scripture, you speak the scripture, you declare the scripture in the midst and in the face of chaos, you speak it. And you decree the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 12. See, in order to fill the inner man, the first step is our heart. Amen. God has two thrones. One throne in heaven and one throne in your heart. Amen. The reflection of your life is the reflection of your heart. Mm -hmm. The condition of your heart is the condition of your life. Amen. So if, we're frustra if we are frustrated with life and we're tired of the same old thing, change is urgent. Amen. 
God is after change, a transformation. When we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that was our first transformation. But it doesn't stop there. It keeps on going deeper and deeper. Amen. 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 Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. As we look at the word in verse, uh, verse 1, it says, present your bodies. That word present is presentation. God wants us to do a presenta presentation for Him. It's a genuine presentation, transparent for the Lord. And He desires for us to sacrifice our bodies. Yeah. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. So don't be fashioned to this world system. Don't be molded to this world ideology. And he says, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. The mind has to be transformed. God desires for us to have the mind of Christ. The Bible says, love God the Father with all your heart, with all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hallelujah. Growing up, I was... When I got saved, I came to Christ, but my mind wasn't renewed. It took many years for that to take place, many years to present that before the Lord. So when I came to Christ, my heart was still filled with hate, with anger, and unforgiveness. And I, I was already involved in the ministry. I was preaching, evangelizing the streets. We were going to hospitals, praying for people, laying hands on people. And when I would come home, I still had anger and hate. Until one day, the word of the Lord was exposed to me. You know, when you've been exposed, when He shines light, Amen. you can't go back anymore. Right. Yeah. When He removes the veil, hallelujah, yes. and He turns on the light, yes. you can't go back. You can't hide anymore. Yes. You can't use those excuses anymore. Hallelujah. I remember doing a remodel one time. And as I turned on the light, there's cockroaches. And as soon as the light turned on, those cockroaches, ran into darkness so when I got saved see the devil doesn't care that you're saved you could be saved he's a negotiator he's a businessman he could let you be saved many years and still not doing nothing for Christ still running this treadmill running the wheel like a hamster going nowhere you could be saved and neutralized. You could be saved and live in a lukewarm lifestyle. You could be saved and still living in a comfort zone. Because he will always want to give you his recommendations, his advice. And it happens in the mind. So I knew when I was exposed with the truth, I had to change. So the one thing I had to go face is my Goliath. Amen. Does anybody have a Goliath? Hallelujah. I had to face a, face a Goliath. There's many mountains that came down after, but the Goliath was the biggest one in front of me. And the reason it was because me and my dad had a lot of hate. We didn't get along with each other. So when Jesus came in, now he's cleansing the temple, because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus came in, as I was exposed to the truth, I had to face him. So I call him one day and I say, hey, hey, Papa, I need to go talk to you. Go talk to him. I was shaking. I was nervous. Mm. As I go talk to him, I sit down and I looked at him and I said, forgive me for what I have done. Mm. And he looked at me in shock because this is a guy with an iron heart. He's a guy with no emotions. And what I did, I reached over and I hugged him. Hallelujah. Yes. And I felt the love of Christ. And that day, the chains of Satan were broken. Amen. That day, I walked out as a free man. I was a new creation yeah. in Christ Jesus. Amen. All things are washed away, and behold, today is a new day. 
creates a new era. It's a new beginning for your life. And that Goliath came crushing down. For so many years, he held me in bondage. I went to church, preached, and I came home to bondage. Like the children of Israel, they always wanted out, but they always wanted to come back in bondage. I live like an, an Egyptian. Is there any Egyptians here to, today? I always wanted to come up, but come back in hate and anger and resentment. Until that day, that Goliath is dead. Amen. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. God wants us to fill ourselves up with life. Life swallows up death. That's right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, many are conformed to sickness. I know believers, great people, they're conformed to the sickness. They have accepted yeah. the sickness. Mm. And they treat this little sickness like a pet. Yeah. They drop pills in the morning. They drop pills in the afternoon. They drop pills in the evening. And they nurture this little pet called sickness. Mm. And they're okay. They have conformed to this world. Jesus paid a high price for us. Jesus hang it, hanged it all at the cross for your sickness and your disease. You don't have to suffer anymore. Amen. Freedom is yours right now as you take it by faith. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. Many are confirmed to fear. To depression, to anxiety, <laughs> insecurities, whatever, what have you. These are just traps of the enemy and God wants to deliver us. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. It says, My son, attend unto my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, but keep them in the midst of your heart. Their life unto those that find them, and health to all your flesh. Amen. Number one, attend to my words. God wants you to read his word, cultivate his word. Amen. Incline your ear unto his sayings. Jesus said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. As we hear the word preached, as you're receiving the word right now, that rhema word, the living word, goes inside your ear gate and it drops seed in your heart, in your spirit. As you look at the word, as you read the word, it goes inside your eye gate and drops seed into the heart. Verse 21, let them not depart from your eyes. So you keep it in the mist. So you keep it, you keep on reading it. Keep them in the midst of your heart. This is where it's at. The heart. God is after the heart. I'm going to share this. Um, we have a chihuahua. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody have chihuahuas here? Oh, praise God. About a couple months ago, I was, it was happening on a Sunday morning. I was getting ready to preach. And this chihuahua was still a baby. We have to train her. Do a potty train outside. And I was letting her out. Uh, she decides to run inside the house. So... I got angry and I started to chase her down. The devil pressed that button and he had me chasing her down. And as I'm chasing her down, she decides to go pee in the kitchen, family room, labor room, and the dining room. So see, I was about to get ready to preach. So now I'm in the flesh. So I had to pray. I called my wife, can you come help me clean it? So we're all there cleaning the mess. And we, we, leave, we leave go to church. About a month after that, she did the same thing again. Mm. As I'm, she ate her food, so it's time to open the door and let her out. And as I let her out, she decides to run inside the house and do whatever she wants. And I was angry. Listen to this. So as I opened the door, I pushed her out. And as I pushed her out, her leg hit the threshold. And it snapped it back. Oh. And she, she cried for a long minute, loud, like somebody was slicing her legs off. 
And my daughter came and she said, what did you do? It's just flesh and bone right here. Said, Can I preach from the heart, brother? Thank you. And then after I was like, no, God, what did I do? I fell for the trap. The first thing I did, you know what? I had to clean my heart because I got dirty. I got dirty in anger. So the first thing, the first thing I had to do is clean my heart. Father God, thank you that you're faithful and just to cleanse me and to wash me from all unrighteousness. And I'm cleansed. Now I'm right standing. I have my mind to pray now. See, I got dirty real fast. I got dirty. But my mind had to be clean, renewed. And as soon as I spoke it, I took it. You know how powerful the word is? Amen. The apostle Paul was there holding the coat of the people that stoned Stephen. And he said, I have wronged no man. Because of the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. He was cleansed and made him white as snow. Amen. So as now I got washed up so now I could pray for her. I lay hands on her. My daughter came. The first thing she did, she quoted the scripture and laid hands on her. You know, that touched me. Because some people don't know. They don't react in the word in the time of chaos. When you hear a bad report, what are you going to do? Are you going to declare and decree the scripture? Or are you going to bow the knee to fear? In the time of chaos. In the time of a turmoil, what are you going to do? God wants you to stand Amen. as an anchor, anchor and declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. So she starts to pray. I'm starting to pray. And then after, okay, well, let's go. We got to go to church, okay? We got to go to church. Um, and then after... Days went by and I would say, thank you. I'll come home and say, thank you, Father, she's healed. My wife is looking at me in the eye. Are you going to take her to the veterinarian or I am? And I said, no, she's healed in Jesus' name. I'm standing on the word. I'm going to put the pressure on the Bible. I'm going to put the demand on the covenant. I laced through with the word. And I put the pressure on the Bible. I started to declare and decree. As I'm raising my hands, thank you, Father, that queen, that's her name, queen, that queen is healed. And my wife is looking at me, are you crazy? Are you going to take her to the veterinarian or I am? I said, she's healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I was praying, this, I did the most praying that seven days. I did the most, nonstop. I go see customers praying in the Holy Ghost. Hi, how are you? I was praying in the Holy Ghost. Expecting it. I was expecting. That's right. yeah. I was expecting. Yeah. That's right. Even though it looks impossible to the natural eye, I That's was expecting. Right. Yeah. Days went by. Approximately about the seventh day. I took her out and she took off like a leopard. I said, Ooh, glory, 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 glory. 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 I discovered that Jesus Christ is also a veterinarian. Amen. <laughs> Not only the healer, the doctor, the savior. A veterinarian. All things are possible to you that believeth. There's no limitations. There's only one person that could hold you back. Self. Only so the devil's defeated. He's under your feet. He's been conquered by the blood of Jesus. We just need to renew our minds. Hallelujah. God's ways are much higher than our ways. He told the prophet Elijah, go to the brook. I'm going to provide bread and fish in the morning and bread and fish in the evening. He provided supernaturally. Someone said, well, what is God? I mean, what am I going to do with my job? God will come through. How do you know he'll come through? Let's look at the scripture. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what's going to happen? What's going to happen if the pandemic, the second wave? Let's look at the scripture. Amen. God will come through. Amen. We need to move when he moves. That's right. That's right. Then God tells Elijah, the prophet, said, it's time to move. I'm going to send you to the widow's house. The widow's house. She's depleted. I'm going to deplete a broken down, busted and disgusted widow. Uh, she's a widow. Poor, broke, busted and disgusted. And he's going to go to the widow. Does that make sense? God's a show off. God doesn't want no one to take the glory. God is a show off. So in the obedience, 
in his obedience, he went to the widow's house. As, she's, as he meets her, he says, hi, can I have a cup of water? She grabs him a cup of water. And she starts to pick up sticks. She's picking up sticks. And the prophet says, can you cook for me a cake? And she says, we're preparing our last meal. I'm picking up sticks so we may eat it and die. The last supper. Praise God. Her last meal. Can you believe little Junior? Hey, little Junior. He's playing across the street with the neighbor. What are you doing tonight? We're going to eat our last meal and die. That's his last supper. So she's picking up the sticks. He says, can you cook for me the piece of bread first? And her mental mind's like, wait a minute. This is our last meal. We don't, we don't have much. But she did it in obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. She obeyed the prophet. Amen. See, so many of us have received prophecies before. And sometimes these prophecies, they sound like they're too big. Like, wow, that is so huge. And we take these prophecies and we put them on the shelf. And we never, we never do nothing about it. God wants you to take those prophecies and keep them before your eyes. God wants you to keep those prophecies and use them in warfare. This is the way the Father sees you. He has a purpose, a destiny. He has something so precise, so unique for you to fulfill. And those prophecies, don't keep them back there on the shelves. Keep them before your eyes. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah and says, Thus saith the word of the Lord, Because you provided for the prophet, your flower shall not run out. The jar shall not become empty all these days until the end of the drought. And God provided for that widow in the midst of a recession, of a depression, in the midst of the pandemic. If God could do it for her, God could do it for you. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God will come through. Amen. Just know it and live it out. Hallelujah. Fill your spirit. Keep on filling your spirit with faith. Yes. Fill your spirit with the word. Meditate the word. Declare the word. Put it in your eyes. Put it in your ears. So it could drop seed in your spirit. Amen. And let the spirit be engrafted with the word. Hallelujah. One more time. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Their life to those that find them. And health to all your flesh. Amen. The word he health is medicine. Right. Take your medicine. It's yes. the word of God. Yes. So, many, so many believers, as soon as they under attack with the headache, they quickly run, run to the medicine cabinet. Take some Advil's or Tylenol, what have you. Before you go to the medicine cabinet, stand and declare the word of the Lord. Amen. Well, how do you do that, preacher? Well, it's simple. Let me explain. Thank you, Father, that I'm healed. That's right. I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, from fingertip to fingertip. I declare my body healed. Every cell in my body. Every organ, every fiber, every tissue, Amen. the bone and the marrow, resurrect, renew, restore with the life of Jesus. Amen. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Amen. Life and death in the power of the tongue. I was watching uh, ABC News tonight. And there was a nurse. that They did an interview with the nurse. And she said, I expected to get the coronavirus. She said, I expected my mom to get the coronavirus. And she said, I expected my mom to die. You know what happened? She prophesied. She cursed herself and her mom. She got the coronavirus. Her mom got the coronavirus. And her mom is dead. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Speak life in every situation. The Bible says, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Declare and decree. For we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within you. Allow him to fill you and release it in faith. A mighty man of God by the name of John G. Lake was sent to Africa. And when he went to Africa, this was the time of the Black Plague. 
as he's in Africa, he's helping carry the dead bodies. And the doctors were like so astonished, it's like, why are you carrying dead bodies? You need gloves, you need your mask, your gown, you need to be covered up. He says, no, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So they thought he was nuts. So he says, okay, if you put the plague on me, that virus would die instantly. So they dared him. So he says, yeah, put, so they grabbed some, some saliva from a dead man, grabbed that, that goo off his mouth. They slapped it in his hand and they used a microscope to narrow down to see what would happen. Yeah. And it withered, it withered. <laughs> Supernaturally. And someone said, yeah, that was him. That's not for me. It is for you. Is. Receive it, receive it. Hallelujah. See, so many of us believe, yeah, God's gonna do something for that person, but I don't know, probably not me. No, believe he will. Amen. You're his child. You are so precious and unique to him, for him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to give you the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to uh, Mark. My wife asked me, what are you going to preach? Are you going to preach about the woman in issue of blood? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you always preach that. It's powerful. I mean, you could receive your, your touch. <laughs> It's so much anointing in that scripture when it's released in faith. You're going to preach it again? Oh yes, and again. And again. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know that this word is alive, is breathing? It's the inspiration of God. God is our Father. Jesus is the face of God. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God. You and I, the believer, we are the hands and feet of God. We represent His kingdom here and now. God wants us to demonstrate His power. God wants us to demonstrate the goodness, His life. So we're going to start with Mark chapter 5. Uh, let's look at verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. This lady had a sickness. It was a menstrual cycle disease. It was an issue of blood for 12 years. And she suffered many things by many physicians. And she spent all that she had and nothing got better but rather grew worse. Has anybody, anybody here have, has been in a situation for at least 12 years? This lady spent all her money, went to doctors and physicians to try to cure her, to try to give her a remedy, to try to fix her, but the situation got worse. You know, the medical science they performed failed. So they kicked her out of the city, and she's in the colonies of the dying folk, that the people are not allowed to be in public. 27, and she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched his garment. Hallelujah. Amen. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be healed or whole. She kept on saying, if I touch his clothes, I shall be healed. If I touch his clothes, I shall be healed. I touch his clothes, I shall be healed. She kept on saying, what is she doing? She's meditating. She's prophesying. She's declaring. She's, her hope is building up. See, hope is an image. She's seen herself pressing in the crowd and touching the hem of his garment. Now, she's in the dead colony. She died. But the image inside of her was growing. That's right. Hope is an image. Yeah. Yeah. And that hope, that image inside of her pressing down the crowd, she was using her imagination God gave her to activate the faith. Amen. As she's growing in her hope, as she's growing in her faith, action had to take place. Right. So finally, faith rose in her heart, in her spirit. Remember, we're talking about the spirit. When I say heart, it's the same thing as your inner man. That's where God wants to deposit His Word. Faith was rising up. And she said, if I touch His clothes, if I touch His clothes, 
in the natural, she's dying. According to medical science, you're hopeless and you're going to die. The bad report has been given, sister. There's no hope. You must hang over here and die. But she said, no. I heard of Jesus. Hallelujah. She kept on saying, if I touch his clothes, if I touch his clothes, if I touch his clothes, I shall be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I should be healed. And straight away the fountain of her blood. Hallelujah. Fountain of her blood. Was she carrying around town a fountain with a dolly? <laughs> Listen. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, out of him, Turned him and gone out. He looked at the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, Lord, you see the multitudes and you say, Who touched me? See, many people follow Jesus for the wrong reasons. Many people follow him to watch a show, a miracle service. Many people follow him to get a free meal. The Bible says that when he was out of the area far, that he did a miracle. He fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. So, so some of them followed him for the wrong reasons. She followed him to touch Hallelujah. life. She kept on filling herself with life. As soon as he touched, she pressed in the cross that the virtue of Jesus went through her body and healed her of the plague. Hallelujah. And she kneeling down, fearing and trembling. Yes. His disciples said, Lord, look at everybody. We don't know who touched you. And he turned around. And he looked at her and said, My daughter, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whose faith made her whole? Her faith. Amen. See, it wasn't Jesus' faith. It wasn't the prophets, Jeremiah's faith. It wasn't the disciples' faith. Her faith. Stir up the gift God is giving you. Stir up the gift right now. It is yours. Stir it up in Jesus' name. Jesus is in this house. The anointing of if God is in this house. It's strong. It is strong. So he looked at her and said, My daughter, your faith has made you whole. Glory to God. She didn't give up. She pressed in with every ounce. Everything that she had, she went through and received the promise. See, God desires, He desires for us to walk out the word, to live the word. Yeah. She filled her hope with the faith image. She set her own point of contact to receive her healing. Her words, they began to penetrate her heart and she began to see herself well. Yeah. Despair and defeat had to give way to faith-filled words that came from her own yeah. mouth. When she touched his clothes, her touch of faith made a demand on the covenant of God and the anointing that was upon Jesus. Yes. Notice it was her faith that made a demand on the healing anointing that was upon Jesus. Faith gives substance to her hope, but healing was not in her body. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1. Hope is important, but hope lacks substance until filled with Amen. faith. Hallelujah. Hope is a goal setter. Her hope was to be healed, but hope did not heal her. Faith gave substance to her hope, but she had to call for it. Amen. She put a demand on the covenant of Jesus. Hallelujah. It takes time to renew your mind and to develop your faith. Your words as well as God's word. Romans 10 says, the word is first in your mouth and then in your heart. As you speak it, it takes time to develop faith. Keep on speaking. Right. Someone says, but preacher, I've been speaking for one week. I haven't seen nothing. Keep on speaking. Yeah. Preacher, it's been one year. Keep on speaking. Declare it. Yeah. Declare it. Yeah. Decree it. That's right. But preacher, my kids are off the wall. Speak. <laughs> prophesy. Amen. 
God's words become engrafted into your heart as you say it. There's nothing more important for your faith than declaring what God has said about you with your own voice. Amen. Giving voice to God's word is a method of calling things that God has given by promise and are not yet in manifestation. The Bible says, call those things which be not as though they were and be fully persuaded what God has promised. He is able also to perform. Amen. You call it out. You prophesy your desires. See, your thoughts and words produce a blueprint. And you live within the bounds and limitations of that blueprint. Your words are building blocks on which you construct your life and your future. Your words set the cornerstones of your life. And you live within the confines of the boundary that you create with your own words. Situations, circumstances, and conditions are all subject to change, but with the support of your words, you could establish them in your life forever. Hallelujah. What you believe you speak not only affects your body, but your immune system as well. Your words become either a blessing or they become a curse to you. A continual affirmation of God's word in faith will build your immune system. A supernatural anointing that is capable of eliminating sickness and disease. Wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, that my immune system is built up, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and I will not get sick. Amen. At lunchtime, thank you, Lord. That my immune system is built up, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and I will not get sick. Amen. I believe I receive healing for my body. Amen. A while back, I was at the ATM, and I seen this lady. I'm not knocking anybody. This is my observation. And this lady got there with the mask and gloves, and uh, she, she was ready. She wiped down the ATM with the uh, white piece sanitizer, what have you. And then she had a cloth, had it dried up real fast. She tossed it in the trash can, put her card in, took it out. I was like, you're doing all that? Wow, I mean, I'm not knocking anybody. I mean, we gotta be smart. I mean, we gotta do our part, be responsible. But so many believers get carried away in fear. And they made this coronavirus to be a big giant. Coronavirus is under your feet. Fill your temple with life. Amen. And life will swallow up death. Amen. Life swallows up sickness and disease. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. Fill yourself up with Jesus. Amen. Words program your heart either to success or defeat. Words are containers and they carry faith or fear and they produce after their kind. Let's say, say, if we all go to a movie theater, and let's say somebody stands up and, with a loud voice and says, Fire! What's going to happen? He's going to release chaos by one word. Faith comes more quickly when you hear yourself quoting, declaring, decreeing the things God said about you. You will receive God's word in your spirit by hearing yourself say it than if you hear somebody else say it for you. Amen. Confess victory in the face of apparent defeat. Confess abundance in the face of apparent lack. You have what you say and you are saying what you have. You can have what you say if you learn to release faith from the heart in your own words. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn. I'm almost finished. I'm wrapping up. Go to Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, praise your name, praise your name. I'm just going to say this. Jesus spent much time in prayer. 
But he never prayed the problem. He prayed the answer. Amen. And what God said is the answer. Amen. They told Jesus, my daughter is dying. And Jesus said, I will go and pray for her with Jairus. So as he's going to the house with Jairus, another ruler of the synagogue and say, don't trouble the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. And Jesus said, she's not dead. She's asleep. Amen. See, what God said is the answer. So he, as he goes to the house, he removed the unbelievers out of the room. Because the unbelievers, they're going to take away your faith. I pray for people and it's like hitting a wall because of their unbelief and doubt. I remember going to a place and the people are looking at me like this. <laughs> Say, hi, how are you? My name is Joe. We're here to pray. We're going to believe God that so and so is healed, resurrected. They're looking at me. I felt so much in belief. I like, wow. I should have asked them. I'm sorry, mister, can you and your family please go outside for a few minutes? I should have done that. That's what Jesus did. So first he got rid of the unbelievers. And he says, little girl, arise. She was about 12 years old. Resurrected power. She was dead. But by the word of his mouth, he resurrected her to life. God is good. I like the story about the centurion. He meets the centurion and says, Jesus, he tells Jesus, my servant is dying, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will go and heal him. And the centurion, the soldier, he's a commander of war. He says, no, Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come under my, my roof. Say the word only and my servant shall be healed. Amen. Say the word only, Jesus. Right. And he says, for I'm a man under authority. He says, I tell this man, go and he, he goeth. I tell to this man, come and he cometh. I, I said to this guy, do this, and he, he does it. He says, say the word only. And Jesus said, wow, I haven't seen such great faith. No, not even in Israel. Amen. And at the same self hour, his servant was healed. Amen. He understood the power of a command. As a general, commander, the words he spoke are powerful. God's words are more powerful. Amen. And He lives within you. He desires for you to release it in faith. Jesus spoke accurate, never crooked speech. His conversation always consisted of what God said. He always said the end result, not the problem. Never did He confess the present circumstance. He spoke the desired result. Amen. So when I was praying for my, my Chihuahua Queen, I'll come home from work and say, Thank you, Father, that she's healed. And my wife is looking at me, It's all your fault. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I'm waving my hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that she's healed. And my daughter in the natural, she was agreeing with me. My kids in the natural, they were agree in agreement. Yeah. But in the natural, she was still walking with the limp. She wasn't walking correctly. In the natural realm. But by the eyes of faith. By the covenant of Jesus Christ. See, we point to Him. His finished work at the cross. He said, it is finished. He gave up the ghost. He conquered death. He was in the belly of the ground. For three days and for three nights, death could not hold him down. Amen. Life swallowed up death. Right. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So he used the written word to defeat Satan. I like what happened when he's led outside the wilderness. He's led for a test. And he led outside the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. There he fasted. 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil came to him when he's at his weakest point. And he says, if you're the son of God, turn to, if you're the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. And he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. So when the devil attacks you, you say, no, it is written. That's right. That's right. You're a liar. That's right. 
and you kick him out. You rebuke him. Amen. You don't allow him to feed your mind. Because he'll try to give you advice. He'll try to give you recommendations. He'll try to give her false ideas. Or even a good idea. But you know, sometimes we got to check, is it a good idea or is it a God idea? Because those good ideas may not be ordained or sanctioned from the Lord. Okay, so Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. I'm almost finished. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Okay, so they're crying because they went inside to the promised land. Moses called 12 men. Let's call them preachers, okay? 12 preachers, one man for each tribe. And he sends them into the promised land to see the land. And they come back and say, yes, truly, this is a good land. And it's flowing with milk and honey. This has been promised by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But one problem, Moses, we've seen the giants. <laughs> and we are like grasshoppers. They've seen themselves. They, they have an image of being tiny like a grasshopper. Two preachers, Joshua and Caleb, said, no, the land is ours. Amen. It's been given to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. Amen. This is going to be a piece of cake for us because the battle is the Lord's. Amen. They say, let's go get it. Let's go take it. Amen. These men had radical faith. Amen. They decreed the promise of God. And listen what happens. Again, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept all night. Has anybody been in that situation that you cry all night? Mm -hmm. You're weeping and you're crying and you're thinking and you're rolling it over and over and over. As these people are crying, chaos is running through their minds. Defeat. Abandonment. Rejection. God, it's your fault. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we should have died in Egypt. Or would God that we should die in the wilderness. And wherefore the Lord brought us into the land to fall by the sword. And our wives and children should be as prey. It's better to return to Egypt. They want to go back to the place where they were slaves. That place that they used to live incarcerated in their mind and they said one to another let us make a new captain let's impeach Moses let's go back to Egypt let's impeach Aaron let's go back to Egypt was this God's plan was God was God going to support this plan no God wants to teach them faith See, there's many challenges that we're facing right now. There's many there's ma many Goliaths or even mountains that's in front of us right now. But God wants us to overcome. Because His Word declares that you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The Word declares that you are an overcomer. How are you going to overcome this situation? By the Word of God. Amen. By the covenant of God. Joshua and Caleb said, we could do it. Let's go get it and let's go take it. The battle is God's. Amen. And I like that story with Joshua. As they're, they're in the battle. Look, listen to Joshua's faith, radical faith. As they're in the, battle, in the battle and it starts to get dark, he calls on the Lord and says, God, hold the sun and the moon until I conquer my enemies. Does that decree sound outrageous? Did God honor it? Yes. Hold the sun and the moon until we conquer our enemy. Amen. And that touched God. He says, Amen. you got it. Amen. See, nothing is impossible. Yeah. God wants to stretch your faith. God wants to increase you today. Yeah. That mountain is crumbling as we speak. Yeah. That Goliath is falling down in Jesus' name. And it's by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God used a little boy to bring down the giant. That's right. 
Right. In the natural, it looked impossible. King Saul even gave him his armor, and it didn't fit him. Dave was, as a little boy, he was trained to be a shepherd, and he was going to use the tools God trained him. We receive training in our jobs. We receive training as we're among the people, as children. Those training God wants to utilize for His glory. Amen. For His purpose. Amen. If God has given you a talent, God wants you to use that talent. Yes. Like the story about the, the landlord that he gave five talents to one servant, two talents to another, one servant to an, another. And he says, multiply, increase, I'll be back. As he goes, the guy with five talents, he multiplied, he doubled his talents. The guy with two talents doubled his talent. And the one with one ta talent, he was neutralized. Yep. He lived his entire life in fear. Mm -hmm. Well, what if it doesn't happen, preacher? Well, you, keep, you get back up and you go. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing this for weeks. Keep on doing it. Right. It's been years. Keep on pressing in. Amen. It's five years, ten years. Keep on pressing in. Breakthroughs there. Amen. So many stop before the breakthrough. That's right. Don't allow fear to keep you in bondage. Yes. Don't allow fear to torment you. So when the Lord came back, He says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful with five talents. You multiplied God another five talents. Welcome and enjoy the glory of the Lord. You've been faithful over little. You'll be faithful, Amen. You'll be faithful over much. The one with two talents, he doubled. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, was God upset about the guy with two talents because he couldn't get the other five like the other guy? No, because he maximized the measure of his faith. Amen. See, not everybody has the same gift. But God wants to use your gift to the full capacity. God wants to use it all to the max. The one with one gift, he was in fear. You know, growing up, I, I didn't ever want to speak in public. Growing up, I never imagined I'd be speaking before people. But you know what happened? The word of the Lord became fire in my bones. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I started to see God move mightily. And that, that's what got me going. Because God is faithful. Supernaturally, He is a good God. Amen. The Bible says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you want, and it shall be done unto you. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. And if you delight yourself in the Lord, He shall give you the desires of your heart. God desires to lavish you. Sometimes our carnal mind doesn't comprehend it. I was praying for this lady one time. She was working two jobs. And when I was praying for her, and I was praying for her, I said, Money cometh, money looking for you, money chasing you, money gonna get you. Amen. And then after she said, Oh, I'm not after money. Wait, wait a minute, Sis, sister, you got two jobs? You're scraping on by? You don't want God to bless you with one job to promote you? That's right. See, religion will teach you to live in poverty. And that's the enemy. That's right. Our mind has to be renewed with the mind of Christ. Amen. Understand the promises of God are avail available to you right now, right here. We thank you this time, Father, for your word, Father, because we're expecting that something good is going to happen. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. God is able to do above and beyond what we ask and what we think. He sent His Word and healed you. He takes sickness and disease away from the midst of you. And by His stripes, you were healed. Amen. I thank you, Father, this time together, Father, that the Holy Ghost is stirring up their faith right now. I'll stir up the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the gift of faith. I thank you for the... 
the operation of miracles and the gift of healing to take place even now, Father. I thank you when they come up forward, Father, they're going to be touched, changed, transformed, delivered, healed, set free. I thank you that the chains of Satan have been broken, shattered to pieces. I thank you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I thank you, Lord, that the best is yet to come. I thank you for liberty, for freedom, Father. I thank you right now, Father, that you move in a fresh and mighty way. I thank you every bone is healed. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, from fingertip to fingertip, I declare their bodies healed. Every cell in their body, every organ, every fiber, every tissue, the bone and the marrow, resurrect, renew, restore with the life, the life of Jesus and I thank you right now father for the operation manifestation the demonstration of your power we thank you father you confirm your word with signs following I thank you father for peace life and health sister can you put some worship music please I thank you right now father for the operation and the demonstration Lord God, we're hungry. We are thirsty. We want more. We want change, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that our bodies are healed. Thank you that testimonies will come out today, Father, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thank you that our bodies are healed in Jesus' name. I speak peace, peace, peace. I speak to the lying devil. Your power is broken in Jesus' name. You cannot hold them no longer, Father. Thank you right now, Lord Jesus. If you desire prayer for healing, come forward. If you need healing in your body, come forward. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your name. Yes. Go ahead. Everybody stand. Put on this mic too. Everybody stand up. Amen. This is the Holy Ghost tune-up. Amen. I think God's tuning you up. It's like an instrument has to be tuned up from time to time. A car does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I think God's tuning me up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God's preparing us for miracles. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you, Father. We're going to cry fires in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Fire of God's power. Fire of healing. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Joe. We thank you, Father, for your touch. Hear and be healed.